Hello everyone, I hope you're doing fine. My name is Skyline. Something I've noticed is that players are often a bit lost in team fights, or they aren't quite sure how a team fight is supposed to flow, which means they have no clue what went wrong or how they should improve. So today I'll be discussing an easy four-step model that applies to nearly all fights in Overwatch that will lay the framework for a better understanding of how they work. First, and a lot of people fall off the boat right from the get-go by messing up this phase, the approach. For each of these phases, obviously the attackers and defenders will have different goals, so we'll start with the attackers. The approach in this case is simply getting from your spawn to somewhere near the point. It isn't quite that simple though, obviously, because of course you want to end up in a good position to initiate the fight that takes advantage of the strength of your team. You also need to get to that position taking as little damage as possible and not feeding any ult charge. You also want to pick an efficient path that gets to where you want to go as efficiently as possible and quickly. The approach phase is much more important than a lot of people give it credit for. So don't be lazy here. I know you're like, I know this. I know how to walk to the point, Sky. No, lately, especially, I noticed that teams are getting lazier and lazier and Symmetras get like guaranteed ultimates just off of just turrets burning approaching attackers. So take the extra one second and consider using different entrances besides the big obvious one in the center of spawn. You know, the ones on the side, the ones you don't use. Take an extra three seconds to check out all of the random corners and the hiding spaces on your way to the point. Move up cautiously, but you know, with a speedy sort of purpose. I'm sure you've seen the Reinhardts that hide in some back area on defense and they charge out and they pin an attacker because everyone just rushed forward and they didn't even look to see the giant guy with armor behind them. Yeah, check everything, be thorough, it's worth the extra 5 seconds, trust me. Just as importantly is that you end up in a good place to initiate from, but we'll go over that a bit later. So what about the defenders? What do they do during the approach? They just have to slow down the attackers as much as possible. That's pretty much it. Spamming down the field, using turrets, being annoying. Take no risks, but any scraps of ultimate charge you can get during this time or seconds shaved off of the attackers is worth it. Five seconds each team fight over the course of a match can add up to an entire push worth of time and really make the difference in the map. Basically, as long as you aren't taking any damage and you're getting to where you want to go as quickly as possible as you approach, that's how it should be done. If you're regularly eating flame strikes or junk rat traps or turret fire or you're losing your shield as Reinhardt before you even get to the choke, that is a problem and you need to fix your approach. The approach is also where random picks can happen and you know how impactful those are. Second, number two, number two, man, I got my uh, countdown voice on point, I think. The initiation. Here, people just sort of pull the entire team fight into the initiation phase, I feel. And most players, they can't really tell the difference between where the initiation ends and the rest of the fight begins. But the initiation is actually an extremely specific time window, and it only lasts a few seconds. The initiation is that two to three second time window where all of the initiation type heroes Watch my team composition guide for more information on those if you aren't sure what those are. So it's where all the initiation type heroes go in, ideally on one coordinated target, and everyone uses burst style abilities in order to start the fight off as, on as strong a foot as possible. We're talking Genji uses dash, Winston uses leap, Anna uses grenade, Soldier uses helix if there's an opening, Reinhardt charges in, you get the idea. You want to cram as much value into those first couple seconds of the fight as possible because the result of those first few seconds has a massive impact on how the rest of the fight goes. Initiation is actually about the same for attack and defense in how it works, but attackers tend to have more control over when and where the fight happens, so it's easier to initiate when you're on attack. Defenders can certainly initiate too, but usually defenders will run more peel heavy and backline heavy compositions. What's peel? Well, peel is sort of the ying to initiation's yang. Initiators go in and try to do as much damage as possible in the first couple seconds of the fight, and peelers try to stop them. Heroes like Roadhog, for example, see more in the composition guide I've put in the description, are good at stopping diving heroes like Genji 
from getting to your important backline supports and DPS heroes. Roadhog can hook them, Zarya is another one, she can shield the target. You are peeling initiators away from your backline, that's why it's called peel. So essentially, right as the fight begins, the first few seconds are all of the initiators trying to do as much damage as possible to important heroes and all of the peelers trying to mitigate that damage as much as possible themselves. Being out of position during this phase is very painful because if you're a DPS or a support, it means you are very easy to kill for the initiators. If you are a peeler, you won't be in the right place to stop all the damage that's coming your team's way. And if you are an initiator, you will be too late and you'll miss your window to have the most impact. Identifying the moment the initiation begins and paying attention to how those first few seconds go and only improving on those first few seconds can increase your skill by an entire leagues or more worth of skill rating with just nailing the first three to five seconds of a fight. It's so important. The third phase, now we could potentially have a lot of different names, but I'll call it the grind phase where you grind out the rest of the fight. Now, sometimes the initiation pretty much seals it. You know, Genji jumps in, uses blade, gets a six tuple kill, easy peasy, all done. No problem. But of course, there are many other times when all the initiators come in, maybe the teams trade out a tank or two, but the fight is still very much alive and winnable for both sides. This is where the DPS and the healing comes into play. All of the initiators have burned everything and it's up to the sustained consistent power of the DPS and healer roles to take it to the finish line. A lot of this phase comes down to raw tactics and aim, but target priority is very important as well. The important targets here are actually not, not the backline like they were in the initiation phase. Here you have to finish off those tanks and those initiators that burned all of their abilities earlier on in the fight. You know, the Reinhardt, Winston, or Rissa with no shield, the Genji with no reflect or dash, the Tracer who used recall, the Roadhog who used hooked, those are the heroes you need to kill immediately. If you let them cool down their abilities, you basically have to eat an entire second initiation. And we just discussed how devastating those can be. These heroes have powerful abilities on cooldown that if you let them sit there and recharge will really, really wreck you. So take the opportunity and kill those heroes while they are still vulnerable. Obviously, if you are one of those target heroes that I mentioned, those tanks, you know, this is the time you should be playing more passively trying to stay alive for your cooldowns unless you see a huge opportunity. After those targets obviously comes the healers and the DPS or whichever one is more easily accessible. If you're finding yourself falling behind during these grindy phases of the team fight, you should be looking at your aim and your target prioritization. If a tracer is sticking in the fight forever and getting off multiple recalls or if a Winston is dropping multiple bubble shields, try to make more of an effort to focus them down more. If you're a tank, don't just throw your life away during this phase, try to recharge your abilities. Finally, the cleanup phase. At this point, one team has essentially come out victorious and there may just be one or two remaining stragglers on the other team. You can leave those players there and sometimes it won't matter, but it can mean the difference between the enemy team grouping up for an additional team fight or not. Attackers who cap the point or the cart should be very vigilant to pick off stragglers after the fight. If you manage to stagger these players, which you should be able to given your massive advantage, you'll buy many free seconds for your team. Also note that when you have a weak hero, like say a pilot diva as the only one remaining in a fight versus six of your team members, try not to kill that hero for as long as possible. Don't kill it until it tries to run off of a cliff or tries to run back to its team or obviously if it's contesting a point, right? Every second you can afford to not kill a straggler is another second you buy for your team in the map. Simply mastering a good approach and a good cleanup will save you upwards of 10 seconds or more in each team fight. Over the course of a map, that's like two free team fights you're preventing or getting. So focus more on these parts of the fight where many people just kind of go AFK and alt tab to Reddit or whatever. What? You you don't you don't do that too? And now here is another, here's one final very important detail to this. So I've, I'm talking about attackers and defenders, but this switches over the course of a map. And I don't just mean between rounds. I mean, for example, in a payload map, if the defenders are defending a spot, 
and you are attacking them, you're the defenders, obviously. But if you're the attackers and you have the payload, and the defenders are trying to take the payload back from you, now they are the attackers acting as the attackers, right? And you are acting as a defending team. Same thing on a control point map. If the attackers come in and they take the point, let's say, and they're capping it, and the defenders want to come and retake it, now the defenders are in an attacker role, and the attackers are in a defender role. Same thing in uh, King of the Hill. In King of the Hill, whichever team controls the point acts as the defenders, and the other team acts as the attackers. You get the point, but I thought that, that was pretty important, because I don't want people to think that defenders means literally only the team labeled defenders in the game. No, it could be either team. But I hope you all enjoyed and have a clearer idea now of how fights are structured, hopefully. It will help you in reviewing your own gameplay and knowing exactly what went wrong and where. As always, leave any questions below and never forget to stay positive and have a great day. See you soon.